time for your light has come. Turn to your neighbor and say, Arise. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory, everyone say, Glory. glory. Of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. How many know we're living in dark times? How many know that, you know, so many people worry about whether we're, who's president or who's not president, who's going to be president, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. It's time to stop worrying and it's time to be light. Because the answer isn't in our politics, the answer is in our church, being the light of the world to our community. I live in Australia, but I watch Fox News, CNN News, and it's amazing how one channel says one thing and another channel says another thing. I'm like, wow, this is like a schizophrenic nation. Doesn't know who it is. I'm not an American. We are like you too, so don't worry. My, our Prime Minister, your President equivalent, he's crazy. Um, so how many know we don't put our trust in men, but we put our trust in God? Right, Sean. And behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness of people. I, I think that's talking about now. It's a prophetic declaration written in Isaiah. But I think we're living in what seems dark times. But I love this. But the Lord will arise over you. This is cool. For His glory will be seen upon you, Planet Shakers Austin. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your arising. Lift up your eyes all around and see they gather all together and they come to you. Your son shall come from afar. God's going to raise up a church that brings sons and daughters back to the, the Father. That people are afar. They might be clubbing today. They might be at sporting events today. They might be sleeping in today. They might be in another state today. They might be in another country today. But God's promise to us here at Planet Shakers is your sons and daughters that seem afar are going to come back. Not just your, your physical sons and daughters, but your spiritual sons and daughters. And it says, And your daughter shall be nursed at your side. I have a daughter. Any joke can touch her, she touches me. And you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. This is a promise of God. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. This is for you this today. There's wealth coming to people today. The multitudes of camels shall cover your land and the whatever of Midian and Ephraim. And, and those from Sheba shall come to you and they shall bring gold and incense and they shall pr proclaim the praises of the Lord and all the flocks of Kedah shall gather together to you and the rams of wherever shall minister to you and they will ascend with acceptance of my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. And it goes on and it says, Surely the coastlands shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish shall come first to bring your sons from afar and the silver and the gold with them to the name of the Lord your God, to the Holy One of Israel, because He has glorified you. And sons of foreigners shall build up your walls. In other words, there's a whole group of people that you've never met, ever encountered, never seen. They're going to come and help build the house of God. And the king shall minister to you. I love this. Therefore your gate shall be open continually and shall not be shut night or day that, may, that men may bring you to the wealth of the Gentiles and the kings in their procession. For the nations and the kingdom which will not serve you shall perish. But those nations shall be utterly destroyed. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I'll make the place of my feet glorious and all the sons of those who are afflicted shall come bow down unto you and all those despised shall come for, for prostate prostate and they shall call you the city of the Lord Zion of the Holy One of Israel and it goes on I will make you an eternal excellence a joy of many generations and you shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breasts of kings and you shall know that I am the Lord and your Saviour Redeemer and the Mighty One of Israel so here's all these promises. 
God's promising sons and daughters. He's promised, I better get where the light is because if I go over there, my head doesn't shine anymore. He's promising sons and daughters. He's promising us wealth. Wealth isn't just finances. Wealth is in your spirit. Well, I know a lot of rich people who aren't wealthy. They just have money. Money does not mean wealth. You know what was wealth to me? People is wealth. People are wealth. Seeing a lost person come makes me more wealthy than a, than a businessman giving me a million dollar check. But God says, I'm going to make you wealthy. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your, the people. I'm going to make you attractive. You're, you're going to be an attraction to kings. You're going to be an attraction to those who are desolate. You're going to be an attraction to those in darkness. You're going to be attractive to the whole world. This is a prophetic promise God gave me about planet shape. But in the first scripture, first uh, verses, I want to focus on it. it says, arise, arise. Notice that, that our job is to arise. Yes. It's not God's job to arise. It's our job to arise. Because God responds to faith. We, sometimes we pray, God, send revival and we don't invite anybody to church. Well, I've got a prayer ministry. You've also got a bringing ministry. I always have said from day one in our church, we need to be bringers. Bring our family and friends. Bring our, our finances. Bring our faith. Bring our fellowship. Bring our freedom. If we bring those five things to the house of God, we bring our family and friends. We bring the community. We bring our finances to fund the vision. We bring our faith to see miracles and breakthroughs. We bring our fellowship so we become family and we bring our freedom so people who are bound can come and experience freedom. See, it's a handful you need to bring every week. So with this hand, I bring my family and friends. Have you done that this week? I bring my finances. Have you done that this week? I bring my faith. Have you done that this week? I bring my, my, my freedom. Have I done this this week? And I bring my fellowship. So here's one hand. The other hand is a scripture promise. I can do all things. So you bring this and God will do this. So when you lift up your hands, you got handful because God has blessed you because you've arisen and you've stepped up and you say, hey, I'm going to be a bringer. I'm going to bring, I'm not going to say, what can my church do for me? I'm going to do, what can I do for the kingdom of God through the vessel of punishment? Arise. That word arise, I love this. This is so cool. It means to establish, to stand. It means to confirm. It, it, it means to um, shore up. It means to abide. So here, here's what our job in when we plan a planet shakers, Austin, God's plan was to establish, to establish, to confirm. To, to, um, to raise up, to perform signs, wonders and miracles, to shore up, to accomplish. This is what this word arises at. So when we arise as planet shakers, as children of God, we, we actually release something. So many times we're waiting for God to do it all. And God says, I need somebody to get out of the boat. Because Peter could never walk on the water if he didn't get out of the boat. That's right. You know, the, by the way, the safest place to be was not in the boat, but where Jesus is in the water. Because Jesus don't sink. The boat will sink, but Jesus, he's not in the boat. So if the boat sinks, bye-bye. So the safest place was for Peter to be was in the water. And even though he got distracted and took his eyes off Jesus, because he was in the vicinity of Jesus, Jesus picked him up and he didn't sink. Yes. Man. See, I, I, I call this faith life the happy, scared life. <laughs> happy you're doing the work of God, but scared to death what's going to happen. When Poncho and Laura drove for about three weeks from Portland, <laughs> Oregon to Austin, Texas, <laughs> they, they took about 25 days. Well, it was actually three, but they had, you know, had family vacation. Oh, look, there's a cow. Let's go and... Let's go and observe the cow for 30 minutes, yes. That's how long it took for Poncho to have a 
number one and two break. And um, <laughs> and so then they'd go on and go, oh, look, this. We haven't seen cowboys before. Wow. They have hats. Some of you look at me, what the heck is he talking about? I don't know. I get into this jet lag zone and it just goes. <laughs> But when they came here, they were so excited, but they were scared. What, how are our kids going to adjust? How are these people going to accept us? How, what are we going to do for a building? What are we going to, they were, they were excited, they, they were happy fulfilling the call of God, but man, were they scared. Not fearful, not like, huh, but there was this, I'm getting out of the boat here. I'm getting out of my security here. I'm getting out of everything I know. I'm leaving my babysitters behind. I'm leaving everything I know. The coffee places I know. The places that I go and rest in. The places I go and ride my bike in. I, but I'm now going to go on a journey to discover all this new stuff. It's time for us. It's so good what God has done so far. But to touch Austin, to touch this city, there needs to be an arising that we bring our friends and family, that we bring our finances, that we bring our faith, that we bring our fellowship, that we bring our freedom. Arise and shine. I love this. I love the shine because Jesus, I was driving through Israel one day as you do. We have this guide, and as I'm driving through Israel, I, it was quite funny. We were filming this, this TV show, and we had this camera, and this shepherd come out because we took this picture of this shepherd, and he came out and he came over the car, and he tried to steal, rip the camera out because, and then he wanted us to pay money, and the cameraman was freaking out. He's going, "Will you drive? Will you drive?" And we're all in the back laughing. It was awesome to see him just scared. And the guy had his crook and he was going to hit him. And uh, we're going, yes, do it. He means it. <laughs> he now works for Daystar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but we're we'll walking driving and, he, and he, the guy goes, see that city up there? I'm like, yeah. He said, that's that city where Jesus says a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And we looked up and we saw this city that just stood out. It wasn't, it wasn't hiding, it just stood out. There was something there. And God wants this church, wants your life to stand out. It doesn't want you just to mold in. It wants you to stand out. He wants, see, God wants to put favour on you so you stand out. He wants to put love in you so you stand out. Because you can handle favour because you love people with your favour. He wants to give you power to stand out. He wants his church to be glorious. Yeah. I believe that we're here so, so that the community of Austin, hey, my marriage is in trouble. Go to that planet shake, this church. There's so much faith there. And the healing that's happening there, it's amazing. I, I met somebody and their marriage got restored. Stand out. Oh, I'm struggling financially. Go down to the planet shakers, people, because they have so much faith that when you get around them, I, I, I got around them and then I went and got a job and I got another job and I got a pay rise at, at this favour. Oh, I, I'm sick. I, I better ring that planet shakers church because I heard there's a whole heap of people getting healed. I heard that, that blind eyes were opening. I heard deaf ears were opening. Oh, there's a social justice issue. Oh, you better go to the planet shakers church because something's happening. Bible says that we are the ambassadors of heaven. Not only are we citizens of heaven, in other words, you might be American, I might be Australian, but we're citizens of heaven first, so our accent should be the same. It's the accent of faith. See, I love it about ambassadors. What do ambassadors have? They, they represent one nation while living in another nation. Yes. So if you're an American ambassador living in the third world, you represent America living in the third world. See, an ambassador has the resource of the nation it represents at its disposal. Yes. So 
in the third world, an American ambassador might be living in third world situation, but he's living in first world provision. Why? Because he's an ambassador of America who is first world. An ambassador has the military might of the country they represent at their disposal. In other words, if there's an attack, they can call on the military might to protect them. You, you see, that, that's what an ambassador has. We have military might in heaven. We have our praise. He gives us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He gives us a garment of praise for the breakthrough. He gives us prayer to see things change. He gives us faith to activate heaven. He gives us miracles and breakthrough. You see, we have military might at our disposal. We have angels working for us day and night. They're protecting us. They're, they're, God, they're, they're around us. We have the Holy Spirit who empowers us. But an ambassador lives in an embassy. Yes. As soon as you step into an embassy, you might be in Australia and you step into the American embassy, you're now in America. Even though proximity you're in Australia, you step into the embassy and it's now considered American soil. So you have now the rights of an American in America in the American embassy. What's the embassy of heaven? The church. The church represents what heaven should be like. And that's why the devil has worked to make the church religious, boring, irrelevant, and no power. And so what happens is people walk in and they go, if this is what heaven like, give me hell any day. But when you understand, we're here to represent, we, we represent heaven. When you pray, let your kingdom Kingdom, the kingdom of God, King's dominion, God's way of doing things. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The people have broken down in society, have broken lives, broken kids, broken finances. They need a place for heaven to invade earth. Arise and shine. You know, I love this. Um, Got a new iPad and it keeps going, turning off. So, don't love that. But my eyes are getting less and less. See, to shine means to become the light of day. I love this. There's a new sound in Austin. Yeah. Right. But there's not just a new sound. There's a new light in Austin. There's a there's a new sound to attract and there's a new light to reveal. Right. It's a light of day. To become light of day. The Bible says His mercies are new every morning. God has plans for Austin that He would bring in a church and He'll bring other churches in that display His glory to say, hey, there's a new day coming for Austin. There's a new situation coming for Austin. There's a breakthrough coming for Austin. That they might call it, which is, which is a self-proclaimed statement, the live music capital of the world, that's absolute rubbish, but anyway, I live in Australia, we're the live musical capital. Just kidding. I live in heaven. That's the live musical capital. There you go. Politically correct like that. Um, they might say this is the live musical capital of the world. Soon, one day they'll say, this is heaven on earth. This is the light capital of America. Your light has come, become a new day, to shine, to become bright, to be illuminated, to be to become lit up. But you can't, you cannot bring light if you don't have revelation. Because revelation is to reveal, in other words, to take the cover off. So if you're living in unforgiveness, you will never see the light to what God wants you to see because you have a cover of bitterness and unforgiveness on you. And it's time to forgive those who've hurt you so you can live in the light. If you're living in selfishness, you have a cover on it. But when you see Him, you become like Him, the Bible says, from glory to glory. And so when you have your light, your eyes illuminated, your spirit illuminated, it takes the cover off and you become generous. Shine means to be illuminated. Wow, I won't even get through to the next part. You are so easy to preach to. I go to some places in America and I want to 
jump off a cliff after the sermon. <laughs> they might be big, but they're not big in heart. Yeah. Now, I'm preaching the who's who and the Christians who big churches and people sit there with their coffees, yeah, whatever. Hunger attracts God. Yeah. Hunger attracts miracles. Hunger attracts breakthroughs. Not sitting there with a little Starbucks going, entertain me, see what you got. But hunger, every week as we come and praise God, hunger attracts Him. Hunger attracts breakthrough. Hunger attracts. It means to give light. It means to light up. It means to be like a candle. It means to lighten. It means to shine. It, you see, this city doesn't shine without a power plant. There's no light in the city unless there's a power plant that brings light. You know God's power plant spiritually for a city is the church. Why do you think the devil has worked so hard on division? Because it can create short shortages that stop the light. So then we have to create our own generators and they're generators of works and of the flesh that seem light, but they're not light because they, they seem successful. You can build Babel with human endeavor, but it doesn't mean light. When you don't walk in unity with the vision, you're becoming a short circuit to the light that God wants to release. That's why God always deals with disunity. Because disunity was the original sin. And disunity comes from pride. You go, what do you mean the original sin? Adam and Eve did the original sin. No, the devil did the original sin. He, he, he came prideful and became disunified with God. It'll shine for your light. Your revelation has come. Then I love this. I won't speak much longer, but you don't hear me that much. So we could go for another three hours. It says, and the glory of the prime minister. No, it doesn't say that. The glory of my boss doesn't say that. The glory of my family heritage doesn't say that. It says, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That word glory, I love this, that, that word glory is the word kabob. And that word glory means abundance. The abundance of God is risen upon you. When we arise and when we shine, he says, right now, I can let my glory come. Because you've acted, I will act beyond your wildest dream or imagination. The abundance of heaven is upon you. Wow. You know, in the global financial crisis, our church giving went up 75% in Melbourne. Why? Because I refuse to let the glory of man be seen upon us. Because I don't live according to the economy of Australia. I don't live according to the economy of the Western world. I live according to the economy of heaven. And so if I arise and I shine and I'm generous in a tight season, His glory is abundance. His abundance. See, Rachel Lamb is here. Her dad is one of the most generous persons from day start. In the time of global financial crisis, that ministry gave more money to churches than anybody was giving that I know of. In fact, they helped the church get a building. Why do you think the abundance of the gospels being preached all over the world through Daystar because Marcus and Joni Lamb refused to live according to the economy 
of Wall Street. Amen. And they lived according to the economy of Heaven Street. Yeah. <laughs> See, some of you got to watch Corona Shaker's conference on Daystar. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think funded that? I didn't. Rachel talked her dad into it. Thank you for that, Rachel. <laughs> but the gospel was preached all over the world. Just in South Africa, Musi Mamani's session saw over 100,000 views. Why? Because when you arise and when you shine, God says, cool, now I can let my glory come. You see, the word glory... Kabod means honor of dignity, honor in rep um, reputation. It, it means splendor. It means weight. Oh. Woo. The weight of heaven rises upon you. OMG. Literally, I worship you, OMG. Because you're my God. The weight. Now I, I, I have a, we have a prime minister in our nation, you have a president. And when they have things you call executive orders, we have things that similar. But when the president signs something into law, it's not president Obama or President Trump or President Bush or it you can take their names out and just say president because Donald Trump in himself has no weight unless he's the president. Obama has no weight unless he's the president. President Obama, any president doesn't have any weight until they, the only weight they get is once they become the president to be the world leader. <laughs> you're all going quiet here because you're thinking of personalities and when you get rid of personalities in your thought and think about their position so they can write executive orders that influence the nation and the nations why because the weight of their office has authority and has power so when God talks about and my glory arise shine for your light has come and my glory shall be seen upon you uh, the glory of the Lord rises upon you, is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord, it's talking of the weight of heaven, which is far more powerful than the, the President of the, the United States, far more powerful than the Prime Minister of Australia, far more powerful than any world leader that's ever come or ever will be, far more powerful than the great, great, great uh, uh, places of Rome and different places that, that he said, you, you arise, you shine, now watch this, I will add my weight, and when my weight is upon you, when my weight comes behind you, there is nothing in hell, or in earth, or in heaven that can stop it, because when I put my weight, it's like my executive order, and people can complain about it, people can say this about it, but when God says it, it is done. His glory. That's why the Bible says, when people dwell together in unity, God commands a blessing. In other words, He speaks into your situation. And when we're in unity, it's not just in unity with each other, but that is important. It's in unity with what He says. It's in unity what His Word says. It's, in, it's coming into agreement with what He says. He says, now I can command, put my weight upon behind you. Some of us are going, God, why is not your weight coming behind me? Maybe there is some unity issues. You believe, but you don't really believe. Let me teach you something real quick. There's a thing called pray through. Yes. That the modern church has lost. Because we want everything now. Give me an hour five service. Motivate me. Don't challenge me. Motivate me. But there's this thing called praying through. And when I don't believe something, I've asked for it, but I don't believe it. What I do is I get in his presence and I keep praying. And I keep worshipping until 
My, my frozen, frosty heart gets melted by His glory. And then I, once I've got in the position, I believe. Now I believe. doesn't matter what I see. I believe. Yes. So because I believe, what I see will come into order. And it might take a week. It might take two months. It might take a year. But what I've seen in His presence. So I've got to keep going back so I don't get any ice around my heart that will stop my belief. That's why if you're not a worshiper 24-7, if you're not a reader of the Word, if you're not somebody who makes the house of God important in your life, your belief. So then you don't pray because you said, God, I prayed for that, but it didn't happen. Help us. The way of His glory. See, this church isn't here because we're anything good. The church in Melbourne, touching the globe, all around the world now. It's not because I'm anything good. It's because I just said, God, we're going to rise. We're going to shine. So that your glory, that will attract sons and daughters. Open heavens and break through. By the way, I heard a great statement this week. We talk about grace a lot. But the angels aren't shouting grace, grace, grace. They're shouting holy, holy, holy. Yeah. If you want to see his glory. has come and the glory your your weight is upon me that's you I want you to stand your feet wherever you are and I'm going to invite people to come and fill this altar it's an altar, A-L-T-A-R. It's just a space, but we'll call it an altar today. An altar, A-L-T-A-R. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. On the altar, A-L-T-A-R. Why? So God can alter you, A-L-T-E-R. The altar is to alter. He so said, I want to carry His glory. And I'm going to rise and I'm going to shine. I, by getting out of my seat, it's a prophetic declaration that I am His and He is mine and I'm going to carry His weight. Let's turn those lights off. Just give people some privacy. We 